came to worship the Lord. Look up and say, you are, you are the source of my strength. Hey, hey, I know he is. You are the strength of my strength. Come on, somebody came for deliverance. Lift your hands. You are. You need some healing? You are. You are the source of my strength. Yeah, I know he is. You are the strength of my strength. We're looking up to heaven. I know you need something. You are.
Have your weight on them today, oh God. Have your weight on today, oh God. Have your weight on today, oh God. We need you on today, oh God. We want your glory on today, oh God. We want to feel your presence on today, oh God. Move now, oh God. In the name of Jesus, oh God. Now we ask, oh God, that you touch our bishop, oh God. Wherever he's weak at, oh God. Give him strength on today, oh God. Use him for your glory on today, oh God. We ask, so oh you God, that you have your way, oh God. In the service on today, oh God. Now we need you, oh God. We know, oh God, that you still are able to do it, oh God. We know, oh God, that you can do anything, oh God. But follow us, oh God. In the name of Jesus, oh God. Now we ask, oh God, that you look down on our children, oh God. In the name of Jesus, oh God. Go before us, oh God. In the name of Jesus, oh God. Now we standing in the need, oh God. Of a miracle on today, oh God. We know, oh God, that you're the white maker, oh God. You're a provider, oh God. You're a keeper, oh God. You're a sustainer, oh God. In the name of Jesus, oh God. Have your way, 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 oh God. We calling on you, oh God. That great name, oh God. That powerful name, oh God. That merciful name, oh God. That keep your name, oh God. No other name, oh God. But Jesus, oh God. At the name of Jesus, David got the trouble. At the name of Jesus, something begins to happen, oh God. We need you, oh God. We need you, oh God. Touch that, 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 oh God. The devil is here. We got the victory, oh God. You have won the game, oh God. You did it again, oh God. You did it again, oh God. You did it again, oh God. In all these blessings, oh God. We're asking, oh God. In your son, Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. And the people of God shout yes. And the people of God shout yes. Lord God, we thank you for healing God. We thank you for deliverance, God. We thank you for setting free, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God. And it's our simple prayer that you have your way, that you shake this place like never before, Lord God. Let no one leave that the same way that they came. Send deliverance here. Send healing here. Send freedom here. Right now, love. Help us 
to trust in you during times of uncertainty, knowing that what is unclear to us is completely visible to you. Intervene, dear Lord, and replace our anxieties with faith, knowing you are working for the good. Our Father, intervene with your wisdom as we make decisions that affect our lives and impact the lives of others. Lead us in the straight paths that develop our spiritual growth and create sustained positive change that reflects a touch of you. And then we get to our declaration. We declare that this is the year we will hear you more clearly and love you more deeply. No distractions will deter us from our persistent pursuit of you and your plan will remain our consistent focus. We declare that everything God planned for us will come to pass. Every attempt to intercept or delay his purpose is canceled in the name of Jesus. And we declare that over and over and over again in the year of 2024 that we will testify God has done it again. God has done it again. God has done it again. And his purpose has been fulfilled in our lives. We declare it. We decree it, and it is so. Put your hands together for Jesus as we continue worshiping the mighty name of Jesus. How many know God is able to do anything?
And we'll try. 
see you. Come on, clap your hands. Yeah. Anybody got everlasting life? Yeah. I got everlasting life. Come on, you don't know like I know what the Lord has done for me. Come on, would you testify to your neighbor? One thing that God did for you in this past week. Come on, tell them what God did for you. Come on, tell them, in spite of the distractions, I'm still here. Yeah. Lord, I just want to thank you. I want to thank you for being so good. So good. So good to me. everybody to turn around where you are. Just turn around where you are. And say, Lord, I just want to thank you. Lord, I just want to thank you. Lord, I just... I see you, Rashawn. I want to thank you for being so good. Yeah. Come on, the Lord has been good. Come on, wave your hand and say, the Lord has been good to me. Your neighbor didn't want to shout with you. I want you to open up your mouth and shout for yourself. The Lord has been mighty, mighty good. Over and over and over. And over again. Lord, I want to fight you. I want to fight you. For being so good. Can I tell you, somebody didn't make it through the week. Let me say it again. I said somebody didn't make it through the week. So I want you to look at your neighbor one last time in this section and say, neighbor, despite everything I had to go through, I still made it. And if that don't make you shout, see, I got one person right now. Don't touch nobody praise. You ought to help them clap. You ought to help them dance, ghost. I see you waving your hand, Quincy. I see you.
I got another day. Just another day.
I'm praising God on purpose. Tell us, I'm doing it on purpose. I'm doing it on purpose. God bless you. Somebody needs 
need to hear that today. He ain't gonna leave it. You have no idea who needed to hear that this morning. God is not gonna leave you. Second Kings chapter four. Yes, sir. Second Kings chapter four. We bless God for the mother of glory, Dr. Myra C. Warner. Come on, let's shout for our mother of glory. Thank God for our elders, our deacons, missionaries, prayer warriors. Everybody, lay hand on yourself and say, uh, "I am." I am. important you are important and we love you and we need you to survive hallelujah I thank God for my precious wife Lady Warner the one who takes care of me uh, glory be to God Father in the name of Jesus Lord, we thank you for yet another opportunity to share in your word. Let somebody be empowered. Let somebody be enlightened. Let somebody be encouraged for such a time as this. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Oh, Lord my strength and my redeemer God when you are glorified the people are edified the enemy becomes horrified because somebody will be sanctified oh God we thank you in advance for what you're getting ready to do God we thank you for what you're doing right now God, sweep through every row, every section, every household. God, give us the breakthrough that we need. And God, we're going to get it today. Oh, God, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank God. Second Kings chapter 4. We thank God for our wonderful music ministry. Singing so wonderful, playing so skillfully. 2 Kings chapter 4 verse number 11 says and it happened and it happened and it happened one day that he came there and he turned into the upper room and lay down there then he said to Jehazi his servant call this Shunammite woman when he had called her she stood before him and he said to him, say now to her, look, you have been concerned for us with all this care. What can I do for you? What can I do for you? 
Do, do you want me to speak on your behalf to the king or to the commander of the army? She answered, I dwell among my own people. So he said, what then is to be done for her? And Jehazi answered, actually, she has no son. And her husband is old. So he said, call her. And when he had called her, she stood in the doorway. Then he said, about this time next year, you shall embrace a son. And she said, no, my Lord, man of God, do not lie to your maid servant. But the woman conceived or son when the appointed time had come of which Elijah had told her. I'm going to stop right there and I want to preach today with your prayers and God's power. You have been approved for what you prayed for. Let me say it again. You have been approved for what you prayed for. Would you look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, my public praise is because God has answered my private prayer. Be seated, please. Please be seated. And listen, I, and I know that we we declared this month was the month of uh, results. Somebody is saying, oh, I haven't gotten it yet, but it's never too late for God. And I want to tell somebody who's waiting right now, I want to tell you right now, in this season, in this season, uh, you're going to see what favor looks like. You're gonna see it. So you have been approved for what you prayed for. Now I want y'all to give me a few minutes to uh, break this down because you have been approved for what you prayed for. Um, I want you to get that on your mind. Whatever it is that you have prayed for. God is saying to the church today, you are approved. In other words, it's coming. And so ladies and gentlemen, if I were to talk about myself, uh, Elder Malone, I am very particular about what it is that I want. It, it has to be something that I desire to match who it is that I am. And I want to tell you right now, I personally haven't been praying about just any old thing. And God is telling us today, he's about to answer my private prayer. It is amazing how many people really don't know what they want. And, and we have become confused in our own consciousness because we are being led by what society is telling us what we should have um, and, and I can prove it to you because many of us your closet is filled with clothes that you don't even wear you, you, you got shoes that don't even fit your feet and you have accessories that don't even match your own taste as strange as it may sound many people are clear about what they don't want but have no clue as to what you should have. So if we were to pass the mic and allow everybody to speak on what they do not want or what they don't desire, we wouldn't have a problem talking about what we don't want. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be hurt, but you have no idea what it takes for you to really feel loved. I, I don't want to be broke. But you don't have a plan 
as to how to get out of debt. I, I don't want to work for nobody else. But you don't know how to have the discipline to wait for entrepreneurship to actually pay off. I feel like I'm talking to some people in this room who have come to a place in your life that not only do you know what you don't want, but you've prayed for something specific that you do want. And God is about to answer your private prayer. And so here in the text in 2 Kings chapter 4, we find the man of God, Elisha who was traveling through a small town called Shunem. And the Bible teaches us that a well-to-do woman takes note of him. And it is interesting when I looked in the text that before now, he had never had a conversation with her. And all she did was recognize how he walked. And his walk was an indicator for her that this is, this gotta be a man of God. Why? Because he had never talked to her. She had not been to any of his church services. She just watched and witnessed his lifestyle. And I wonder, I just wonder, how many people would be able to conclude that we were under the covenant of God. Not based off of what we do in church, but by observing our lifestyle. And seeing how it is that he walked, she said, I got to do something to help this man of God. And I need to offer some type of provision for him. So she offered this to him. She says to him, whenever you come into town, just stop by our house because I'm going to feed you and I'm going to take care of you because I see what it is that you are trying to do in the kingdom right. and I got a soul into that yes, so every time that Elijah comes through Shunem he would stop at this woman's house and she would feed him and this is amazing the amazing thing is that as time went on she had a discussion with her husband and, and she says um we got to do something for this guy I want to build him his own room because he needs somewhere to stay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But she initially thought that her assignment was to feed Elijah. Mm -hmm. But as time goes on, she realized that that wasn't all that she was supposed to do for the man of God. Mm -hmm. Because she was supposed to make sure, make sure that he had somewhere to stay. Yes, right. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope that you're excited about this time of your life. Because in this season, before the summer is over, there are going to be some people who don't even know how much they are supposed to bless you. Yeah. 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 And, and it's not supposed to be something that you cannot use. But it is something significant. And God is getting ready to compel somebody to do something for you. And here's the part that makes me shout, and they don't even know about it. They have no idea that they are about to be used to help you in your time of need. And so this woman in the text, she thought that it was about rice and bread when it was really about room and board. So, so do you not understand and realize that God has in mind for you is way bigger than what you are receiving right now. But you are so satisfied with just a happy meal. God help me. Y'all missed the shout. Some of y'all are satisfied with your happy meal. And you don't even know that God has in mind manifestation. And I don't know how many of y'all can handle this, but I feel like I ought to release this in the atmosphere because God has in mind something bigger for you. And if you don't want it right now, just be satisfied with your small stuff. But for those of us who are expecting greater, that you realize that where I am does not even begin to scratch the surface of what it is that God is getting ready to bring into my life.
And maybe God just wanted to see if I could be appreciative of what it is that some perceive as insignificant before he gives me the increase. When I give God thanksgiving for the small stuff before he begins to enlarge my territory. And I hope y'all can understand that all God has for you, you got to grasp it in your mind right now. Because do you really think that what you have right now is all that God has for you? Because God wanted to see how we would walk even when you don't have everything that you desire. But you're trusting God that in this time of my life that the best is yet to, to come. And so this woman has this room built for Elijah. I'm in verse number 11 of 2 Kings chapter 4. You look at the text because you got to notice that he goes up to the room. And if you look closely at the text, that when he gets to the room to rest, he is talking to his servant, Jehazi. And don't miss it. All right, because she built the room for Elijah. Bible lets me see that he goes up to that room and then he begins to speak to his assistant Jehazi. Wait a minute, wait a minute. We almost drove by the text because I want to suggest to you that the room was just supposed to be for Elisha but Jehazi is in the room with him. And, uh, and so now um, some of us can't even perceive what God is getting ready to give you. You're missing your shout because um, your blessing that's getting ready to come through prayer is going to be enough not only to cover you, but this next prayer that is coming your way is getting ready to help the people who helped you. Okay, uh, I thought y'all would have shouted better than that. I wish somebody here would be really thankful unto God that God, when you bless me, let the blessing be so big that my children will benefit from it. Y'all are not shy. I said, let this blessing be so large that my grandchildren will receive a double portion. Y'all are not shy. Lord, I don't want it all for myself. I want it to cover whoever is walking with me. Because you don't even realize what just happened. Maybe I went through it too fast. But would you lean over and tell a neighbor in your area, say, neighbor, you ought to be glad that you're sitting in my area. Because God is getting ready to bless me. And I serve a God of more than enough. Y'all are not shouting. So when he blesses me, Everybody who's close in proximity to me is getting ready to get a breakthrough. So if you know that you are the recipient of God's favor, I dare you to open up your mouth and give him glory right now. Like everybody connected to you is getting ready. Oh God. Whoa. I felt that in my spirit. Because I need everybody I love to get what they've been praying for. Yeah. Hallelujah. So I'm in verse 12 of 2 Kings chapter 4. Watch what Elijah says to Jehazi. He says, call her. Call her. Call her. Because I'm getting ready to put a call on her. Call her. And I wish there was somebody near you who, who has enough faith to look at somebody on the side of you and tell them, he's calling you right now. He's calling you right now. Hallelujah. They missed their shout. Uh, they missed it. Turn around and tell somebody else, he's calling you right now. Oh, yeah. Because there is a call on your life. And you are not just a regular anybody because there is something extraordinary about you. There is a call 
upon your life. And it's getting ready to mess us up right here because I hope we can receive what I'm saying right now because ordinarily when we interpret or deal with a call, our understanding, albeit limited, our understanding of a call is when God calls us, it is because it's something that he wants us to do. But I want y'all to hear me, but the call that you're about to get now is not because God just wants you to do something. But I want us to shout in here because what are you saying, preach? I'm telling you right now, God is calling you because he wants you to be ready to receive something. Y'all are missing. God help me. Some of y'all didn't receive it, but I need those of you who know that God is calling me to get something better. He's calling me not just to do something, but he's calling me to get ready to receive what I've been praying for. Let me say it again. God is calling you. And Elijah says, um, I want to do something for you. And watch how the text read. Verse number 13, 2 Kings chapter 4. I, I want to do something for you because I have seen the trouble that you've been going through. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. God help me. The other diction, I'm in the book. Yes, sir. You in there. <laughs> <laughs> the text says, he says, I, 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 I got to do something for you because life hadn't been easy for you. God help me. You, you had to go through some adjustments, some inconveniences, and and had to do some things that were not necessarily required of you. And you have gone over and beyond. Come on, Here's sir. the text. Come on, come on. What can I do for what you? Can I do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I came with the announcement to somebody in here that God has seen all the trouble that you have gone through. Come on now. He saw the nights that you couldn't sleep. Hallelujah. He saw the days that you were just simply trying to keep yourself yes, together. Sir. Yes, sir. He saw the weeks that you had to suffer in silence. And the moments that you had to talk yourself out of having a breakdown. He, he saw you when you prayed for other people. When you didn't even have strength enough to pray for yourself. He, he, he saw you how you sacrificed your own happiness just to make sure that your children had everything that they needed. Somebody should have shouted. He, he saw you when you were faithful over a few things. When, when you were dead, dog tired. You still got up early in the morning seeking God. He saw how people handled you. But you still keep a smile on your face. Can I tell somebody who was shot with your pastor? He saw you. He saw you. He, he, he saw you. God was watching you. He, he saw you. When you had to deal with everything that you've been going through. I'm still in verse number 13 of 2 Kings chapter 4. Is there anything? anything. Come on, sir. God help me. Is it anything, anything that I can do for you? Uh -huh. Glory be to God. Mm. Would you just ease over and tell your neighbor, God wants to do something for you today. Hallelujah. Y'all didn't say that like you really wanted the neighbor to get something. Tell them like you really want to see them get delivered. Say, God wants to do something for you today. Hallelujah. Tell them like you're not going to be jealous of their breakthrough. Tell them again, God wants to do something for you today. God, I hope y'all can handle this. Because it's not necessarily because I need it. I hope y'all can shout with me today. But God says, I got to give you something today because you deserve it. Oh God. 
I thought we'd knock over some shit. I said, God said, I'm giving you something today because you deserve it. Hallelujah. Maybe I'm in the wrong place today. I said, God is giving you something today because you deserve it. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory which shall be re revealed in you if you suffer with him. Oh God, can I tell you, you deserve something extra today. As hard as life has been kicking you, you deserve it. In other words, when you look in the text, here is a request form for anything. Anything that you want. What can I do for you? No limits. God help me. No boundaries. Here's our shout. No budget. What is it that you want? And I don't know how y'all feel about it because I dare not speak for you. But if I got this kind of request, hallelujah. Can I tell y'all, I just don't want anything. As a matter of fact, my faith is of such, I don't want anything small. God, now that you ask me like that, I was trying to be laid back and reasonable. But since you brought it up like that, God help me. I, I don't just want in this moment, I just don't want a regular blessing. What kind of blessing do you want, preacher? Well, I want something exceeding. Abundantly. I see you running in the back. Above what all I can think or dream or imagine. And y'all are not shouting, but the question is, what do you want? Glory be to God. Would you ease into your neighbor and say, neighbor, this is not for a small blessing, but I need something that goes beyond what I even dreamed of. Now ask them again, what do you want? God help me. Somebody should have shouted out loud, I need a miracle. What do you want? I need to be healed. I know what the doctor said, but be healed. What do you want? I got some deadlines coming up, and I need God to go above and beyond what my eyes can see. What do you want? I want everybody I love and connected to me to have everything that they need. What do you want? Oh God and, and Elisha I'm almost done Obviously He does not know this woman too well Watch the text I'm in verse number 13 uh, He must don't know her that well Because he asked the question uh, He says uh, Do you need me To go and talk to the police God. God. <laughs> and, uh, she says, no, I don't need that. I'm good around here. I'm good because they know me. And this is the neighborhood I've been in for a minute. And I'm not afraid of nobody. You don't know what kind of God that I serve. If you think 
I need security. God help me. Y'all miss what I said. You missed the text. You must don't know the kind of God I serve. If you think I need security. I, I don't need that because I have blessed assurance. Y'all are not shy. God help me. What, what kind of life would I be living if I'm always scared? And nervous and, and worried all the time. If I find myself in trouble, I know how to call on the name of Jesus. And my Bible says he shall hide me. What kind of God do you think I serve? And now watch. Watch what G says in the linguistics of the text. Uh, G says in verse number 14, 2 Kings chapter 4, watch what he says through deductive reasoning. He says, um, she has no son. No son. Look at what G is saying. He says, um, she, she has no son. And I looked at it and said, this is important um, because um, he did not say she has no children. It's important that you look at the text closely. So, uh, so this woman is not a barren, empty woman. Watch this. It's not that she doesn't have children. She doesn't have a son. All right. So, so uh, she and the husband, they need a son. They need a son uh, because the son is the one who carries the family name. Oh God, y'all are missing it. So, so she has daughters, but when they get married, they will usually take on the name of their husband. So G says, uh, give her a son. All right. Give her a son so that the name can go on. I missed it the first time. Let me rewind it and give it to you again because I missed it too. Here it is. Uh, watch this. Maybe y'all will shout over this. Say, she needs a son because son carries the name. So I asked y'all what it is that you wanted from God. And when I looked in the text again, the text says, you need something with your name on it. I feel like preaching now. Let me say it again. They didn't shout good over here. I said, you need something with your name on it. They still didn't shout. They missed it. Because you need something. You need your name on the deed. God, help me. God give it to me right now. You need your name on the contract. Y'all are still missing it. You need your name on the title. And some of us are not shouting because you haven't grasped the concept of having your own stuff. But everybody who wants ownership ought to shout unto God. Lord, release it in my name. Release the property with my name on it. Release the business with my name on it. I need my name on the outside of my office door. And those of you who still believe in the word of God, I just want to remind you that St. John chapter 14 verse 13 Jesus said if you ask anything in my name here's the shout he says I'll give it to you somebody's still missing your shout in other words if you ask in his name Jesus says I'll put it in your name. Let me give it to you again. If you ask anything in my name, I'll put it in your name.
So if you need something from the Lord, I dare you to call his name. Good glory. If your neighbor shouted Jesus, let's elbow him and tell him there's something with a, your name on it. Tell him there's a blessing coming with your name on it. Tell him it's a breakthrough, it's a miracle coming with your name on it. Glory be to God. There's power in the name of, of Jesus. And if you're sitting in the area where they didn't shout, turn around one good time and tell somebody else. Tell them there's something coming with your name on it. As a matter of fact, it's an express mail. As a matter of fact, somebody getting an overnight blessing. Because something got to come with my name. Y'all are missing what I'm telling you. And anytime you need and you get something that's real important, they'll send you a text message that says somebody got to be at this address because you got to sign for this. I'm telling somebody right now, if you can shout real good, God is sending a blessing that you got to sign for. Because it belongs to me. Why I got to sign for? Because people don't believe I got this. Oh, glory be to God. Would you elbow your neighbor and say, neighbor, get ready for a blessing that got your name on it. I done shouted for everybody else. I need something with my name on. God help me. I ain't gonna never sit down on your breakthrough. But God, I need something with my name. And some of y'all missed a good shout to cover your children. God said if you shout right now, I'm covering your children because they already got your name. We almost ready for takeoff. I'm glad y'all came to stand with me because we on the runway now. Glory be to God. I wish by faith you're easy to your neighbor and say, neighbor, can you hear that? Say, what is that? Tell them it's a delivery coming down your street. Because God got something with your name on it. Amazon Prime is coming tomorrow. Now this up with your name. That edge is on the way. Because Lord, I need something with my name on it. And surprise, surprise, surprise. It's going to exceed what you've been expecting. I wish somebody lift their hand and say, surprise, surprise. There's a table prepared. The table got reservated seats. It's a reserved seat at your table. We're getting ready to go. But I'm in verse number 15 of 2 Kings chapter 4. And Elisha tells Jehazi. I'm, I'm almost done. He says, G, call her. Yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. I'm trying to make the text palatable to what you know. He says, G, call her. Right on. I um, heard somebody say just yesterday, um, they just have to give people just a simple name because we make up crazy names. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
Jehaz a Sora. Elijah says, G. Call him. Call him. So y'all gotta understand that we are talking about black people. So G, 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 call him. I'm almost done. Bible says um she shows up, stands in the doorway. Watch this. And um, I just noticed that um only about 5.6 of y'all heard what I just said. Call her. She shows up and stands in the doorway. I'm talking to you. I got you. I'm coming. And so, because she has a call on her life. So the prophet has called for her. Bible says that um, she stands in the doorway. And, and what's amazing um, is that a door operates in two ways. It depends on which way you are facing the door. And um, you need to know that this town is called Shunem. Which I read it translates to mean two resting places. So it's one door but it does two different things. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. A door can be an entrance. Yes, and a door can yes. be an exit. Well, well, well. So I need for you to understand that right now, if you get up, you'll be standing in a doorway. Yes, when we give God glory this Sunday morning can I tell you that your stress is making an exit when you give him glory everything that has been worrying you is getting ready to make an exit and if you can clap your hands and praise our God, all of the pain in your body is getting ready to make an exit. And if you keep on giving them glory, it's not just an exit, but now it becomes an entrance. Lift up your head, O ye gates be lifted up so that the king of glory shall come in and here is the question who is yeah, the king of glory the Lord mighty in battle lift up your head would you lean over and tell your neighbor say neighbor your blessings are coming in because I've had enough discomfort. But when I give God praise, my blessings are coming in. Angels are coming in. Favor is coming in. Goodness is coming in. Mercy. It's coming in. Send it on down. Send it on down. Lord. Hey. Lord. Let your Holy Ghost come on. Come on down. Lean over. Tell your neighbor a fresh anointing is coming in. Yeah, 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 an anointing just walked in. 
to your address And by the time I say by the time By the time You get home Every spirit That's not of God Has got to Come out Come out Come out By the time You get back home Your stress Is making an exit So if you praise him. God is sending a new anointing to your address. Shout it, yeah! Shout it, yeah! Would you just do me a favor?
got a public praise. I had a private prayer. If you can't shout for your neighbor, don't let nobody hinder you. I got to praise him in public for what God did for me in private. You better run, Kim. I want you to pull on your neighbor. It's all right. Pull on your neighbor and say, neighbor, I prayed for this. I cried for this. I lost sleep over this. And now my private prayer deserves a public praise. my private prayer deserves a public praise. Be not dismayed whatever betimes God will God will. Hey. I'm trying to find the right section. I said I'm trying to find the right section. Let's try it one more time. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, my private prayer deserves a public praise. Because don't mind me right here, because I'm getting ready to receive what eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. Join you. 